Okay, this is the Votima workshop for the 6th of October. I suspect we have maybe 44,000 people on the channel right now, um, or more like four. Anyhow, so if you have joined us today, um, welcome, um, thanks for joining. And if you're watching this on video afterwards, um, there's a couple of things that we're not going to show um, on the video that we might edit out. Uh, so the people that do make it to the live show um, will see some interesting stuff, hopefully. Um, so let's just start. Uh, a lot of people have asked me in the past couple of weeks, you know, what is Votimo used for? And, you know, why should we be excited about it? And who's it by, who should it be used by? So we normally say that it's normally like intelligence analysts or researchers, investigative journalists, um, guys that work with OSINT a lot. Um, because really what it does is it allows you to capture web pages during an investigation um, and it then allows you to replay those pages later on. Um, that's one of the biggest features that it has. Um, but it also does a lot of other things like, for instance, uh, enriching uh, uh, objects that it extracts from there and um, tagging images and tagging uh, text and all of these things and I'll show you how how that stuff works I'll also show you in this uh, in this talk how to get started with all of those things right so like we said it's preserving web pages all of that happens locally so the pages are locally stored um, you know, you can see it as a kind of advanced search engine for pages that you've been to. So it's really easy to retrieve those pages that you've seen. Um, we do uh, object extraction. Some people can call it scraping. Uh, but we're kind of scraping it from local files because we are saving the pages locally and then scraping it. So we're not scraping it directly on the, on the site. Um, then we do enrichment, which I'm going to spend a lot of time on today. Uh, there's a little bit of reporting on that. Um, we say it's forensically friendly because we have um, hashes of all the assets that's been used within a, a page. Uh, and we do, and we also very export friendly. So when we export, we export stuff uh, very easily. Um, and I'm also going to show you how you can export pages that you've been to and images that you've been to. Um, and the other thing that's an important design criteria for us is that everything is local. So everything kind of stays uh, on the drive. It doesn't, it doesn't leave the computer. When we're talking about enriching, then of course those things um, do get enriched by third parties. Um, but that's optional and you, are, you should be very aware that it happens when, you know, when it happens. Um, so those are things that we're going to look at uh, today. Now... If we take a little step back, um, people ask, but why do you have a need to do all of this? Um, and what is this really for? Now, imagine you are doing an online investigation or online research into, let's say, a group of companies. Um, and that takes you uh, two weeks to do. Uh, for, so for two weeks, you're looking at different companies, different people within the company. Maybe you're doing due diligence. Uh, for someone else, you know, maybe it's a, maybe it's a criminal uh, organization that you're looking at. Um, and But for two weeks, you're basically browsing the web and you're finding information, you're finding more pages that relate to this. Um, and you got to somehow keep that somewhere and you got to keep track of where you've been and you got to keep track of what you've seen on those pages. And that is what this tool is used for, is basically to keep track of the places you've been and the things that you've seen on those um, pages and to make it really easy to get those pages back and to be able to search um, through those pages and see what's on there um, and being able to see the the objects that are on those things like the names that appear there and to be able to uh, you know do some kind of a correlation between this name has been seen on all of these places now imagine then a month later when you well, let's say you submit your report or whatever a month later you got to go back to that particular case um, you want to be able to then get a snapshot of exactly what those pages look like and it might be that that um, the 
people or the organization that was under investigation has changed those pages that it's been removed and so now you have local copies of it that you know you you will always be able to preserve on your local hard drive um, and you can see you can remember what the train of thought was and you know where who which individuals fit in at what places and that's kind of why you need a tool like Vortima um, to keep all of that information um, in a central place and to be able to access it very easily and even be able to access access it a long time later right so that's why we why we have a tool like Vortima okay so now let's see what it looks like um, a lot of people are kind of intimidated by installing and you know they, these days everybody think everything should just be a website so I'm going to quickly show you how we're going to do that. I don't know why Microsoft is doing this. Hopefully I can just not have it. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay, so you would go to download. All right, and if you go to download, you'll see that you can pick if you want to install it on Windows, Mac or on Linux. Um, that's step one, download and install. And step two would be to install the browser extension. Now, the browser extension runs on any Chromium browser. So Chrome is a Chromium browser, obviously. Um, but Brave is also a Chromium-based browser. Um, so is Edge these days, actually. So you can use Edge as well. Um, Vivaldi, I think, is also a Chromium-based browser. Opera is also a Chromium-based browser. So actually, pretty much any browser except Safari or Firefox, you can install this extension on it. Now, I've already done the download, so I'm not going to download it again. So what you do is you install it. So you'll see that it's a verified publisher. And you go next. And let's create a shortcut. You go install. And I get a message on my phone. So let me just switch this off. Okay, and we're going to launch, right? And it launches with this snazzy little splash screen over here. Uh, the first time you run it, it takes a little bit of time because it's building all of the databases at the back. Um, so just be patient. Um, it's a Java-based application because it's got to do a lot of heavy lifting on some of the uh, database queries that we run. Um, and there you go, okay? This is what it looks like when you start. And it starts with this message that says, actually, this is really important, and you should actually read it. I'm not going to read it now. But what it says is that, you know, no software is bug-free. And if you have evidence that you're collecting for a specific reason, you should export it so that it doesn't, so that you don't lose it. You know, if it's really, really, really critical, then it's a good idea to export that stuff to, even to paper, you know, that you know exactly it can't be destroyed electronically and you click on understand agree and this is what it looks like and now um, people would don't know what to do they click on things and nothing happens and you know, they're unsure of what is there to do at this stage well that's because you need to also ex install the extension and so let's go to the extension store and you'll see there's Vortimo and we're going to add it to Chrome. All right, so we add extension. Now the same, it happens pretty much exactly in the same way um, on um, Edge and uh, Opera um, and in Brave. And we, and we have a section in the documentation that is all about that. Okay, so it says Vortima has been added to Chrome. Uh, and what I normally do here is You'll see there's a little puzzle piece that sits here on the top right um, and it allows you to pin your extensions. So you want to pin Vortimo down there, right? Because when you click on this over here, you'll see that it basically opens up a little control panel for Vortimo, right? You can see here's things that you might want to use on Vortimo. 
Right, but now we've installed it now. Install the um, client application. I'm going to close the Chrome store and I'm going to go to a new web page. So let's go to, I always test it with test cricket because I put in test and then I get, you know, sites that are not that interesting. But test cricket uh, can be exciting. It's not always, it can be. And as soon as you open a new page, right, you won't see it here because there hasn't been a page that loaded yet. But as soon as you open a new page, you'll see on the left hand corner, there's the extension. There's the extension, uh, what we call the, the button, right? Um, and you can actually pick this up and you can move it around. Right? So let's put it, let's put it over there, right? Um, and you see all of these things that it can do and obviously we're going to go into that in detail but one of the things is that it can be kind of annoying when it's taking up all the space so you can click on the side over there and now it's just that little green thing that sits there and if you mouse over it you'll see it comes alive right if you want to switch it off you can just click on the power button at the top and now you'll see it's grayed out and now it's switched off right um, I'm going to switch it on right Okay, so let's browse a little bit here on this, uh, you know, on this page. So let's go to England and Australia. Uh, you know, it's just a, a place over here. Let's go to James Lee White. Uh, maybe we'll go to the history of Test Cricket. Hello. Okay, there's the history of Test Cricket. Uh, Charles Bannerman. Okay. And we now just browsing the web, just like usual. Now, when you go back to the um, Portimo UI, you'll see it still looks exactly the same. And actually, if you read what it says here, it says this page does not auto refresh. Click on the reload button. Top left in the UI, not the browser refresh button, to see new results. So the top left on the UI is over there. And that says refresh results. And the reason why we don't show these results immediately is because you might be busy looking at pages and um, navigating this UI. And if it updates all the time, then, you know, that's not what you want. So when we click on this button over here, we now see these pages and these are the pages that we actually been to it also so it also says here's the page for the Vortimo site where we downloaded the extension test cricket the history of chase test cricket james lillywhite back to the history of test cricket and charles bannerman right so this is where you see the actual results that came in um, and you can make these uh thumbnails you can make them bigger or smaller right we make it five, then it's a little bit bigger. At four, it's a little bit bigger, right? Uh, you make it all the way to, I think, ten. Then they're really small. Uh, and five, it's kind of okay. The other thing that you can do is you can say, well, we don't want to show them as thumbnails. We want to show them as a list. And you can click on that button over there. And now you can now you can read. You know, you read the title, um, and so on. If you want to replay the site so if you want to get the data back so you know what's the tool its main purpose is to be able to save pages so let's say I want to see the history of test cricket I can just double click on it and it basically plays that page back now this is not the page this is the, it didn't go onto the internet it basically looked at the page that we saved and get saved in MHTML by default but if you look at the top here, you can actually save this page as a PDF. You can save it as a JPEG. You can save it as an MHTML file, which is the original source. Or you can save it as an evidence pack. And uh, we'll maybe look into what an evidence pack is in a bit. All right. So this is basically, the, in the most basic way, how you can get the pages. You see that they're all sitting over here. Right. Now let's go back. Now let's just go somewhere on uh, 
we pick one of these sites, right? The breakup of Bannerman's 100. I actually don't know what it is. Um, I think it also goes to... Okay, this is a very old website. Okay, but it is in text. And what you find, what is interesting, is that there are small things that are underlined here with yellow dotted lines. George Hewlett, James Lily White, Charles Bannerman, Jack Blackman. Let's just maybe find a site that is a little bigger than this because I don't think anyone can read this. So let's go back. Let's go back again. And now you can also see that some of these names are being yellow underlined. Okay. Um, and one of the things that Votima does is it basically shows you when certain things, certain names, have been seen on more than one domain. And a domain is something like Wikipedia or Facebook or Instagram or, uh, you know, whatever. So I could be on Wikipedia the whole day long and I wouldn't see any names being underlined. But as soon as I start looking at extra pages, then those names would be underlined. So Charles Bannerman, for instance, if I mouse over this name, it would tell me that it's seen it on Wikipedia and on sportsstats.com.au, which is that page that we would just been on. And it also tells me that it's been seen with these other names, James Lily White, Billy Murdoch, Jack Black, Blackham, people that live a long time ago. Right. So these are names that it's seen in conjunction with this. And this is one of the things that um, Votimo does, is it basically tells you, hey, this maybe this name or this IP address or this, this uh, telephone number or whatever it is, is important for you. And this brings us to object extraction. So when you look at the UI, you'll see on the right hand side, there are objects on this side. In, in our case, there are just names. So we don't even see that it's names, we just see the names, right? If we go to a page, I'm going to pick a page. Um, let me go to, let me go to this page, right? Um, just put it in the browser. Okay, and of course, this page will be recorded, right? And you'll see there's some IP addresses here, and this is basically the analysis of malware, right? So if we go back to this page over here, and we do a reload, it takes a bit of time for this page to be processed. So you just got to reload it again, and then you see there's Carbonac week two continuing, and now you'll see there's IP addresses over here as well. So if we click on it, it's actually going to show me the IP addresses that it extracted from there, right? It says it's extracted six IP addresses and two names, Michael Bailey, Tom Bennett, and these IP addresses. Right, so if we look on this, um, we can basically find the, nom the name Tom Bailey in here. Somewhere it's going to be uh, in this page, but it won't be underlined at this stage because it's only seen it on one, uh, on one domain. Uh, there's Michael Bailey. Uh, actually, Michael Bailey is probably the guy that that wrote this uh, article, right? So that is the object extraction that happens on this side. And of course, we can now navigate things based on those, uh, based on these objects. So let's get a little bit more, a few more pages with uh, Michael Bailey, right? So. This is going to bring me to the next part that I want to show you, and that is tagging within the tool. So I can actually say, this Michael Bailey, um, I want to I want to underline, I want to see the name everywhere within the tool, right? So um, let's take, let's see where his name is. Um, I'm just going to take it there at the top. Okay, so. We're going to take this and we're going to get this we're going to get this menu this is just copy that opens this in the tool we're not going to look at that now and this star basically says hey this is important and i see that it's underlined in red right and it says it's a name 
it says Michael Bailey, it's a name, it's seen it on Mandiant, and it actually relates to these objects, which were these IP addresses that it's found on this page, right? So this name is important for us. Now, as soon as there's a, a name or a, a, any kind of value that is underlined, it brings up, when you mouse over it, this heads up display. And we can write a note on this person. So actually, let's just write a note that says, works on malware. Sorry, I'm typing with one hand because my shoulder is... is um, broken um, so there we go Michael Bailey now works on malware right and you can see that it gets a tag so everything within Vortimo is tag centric everything works around tags um, and by default there's one tag and that's the favorite tag so we're going to apply once you've tagged it like this it applies the favorite tag on this on this name right um, now let's say one of these in later uh, investigations, we found that one of these IP addresses are interesting to us as well. So I want to show you that we can tag things from the UI as well, and that the effect of that has on the page. So over here, let's pick, I don't know, let's pick this 94156. And I want to tag in the UI after I've done my investigation or by someone else. I want to now tag this IP address as important. So I can right click on it and I can say favorite and you see immediately it gets the favorite tag. But what's more important is when we go back here, that's now red underlined as well. So it means I will see this IP address and this name whenever I browse anything else, that name will show up and say, hey, this is where you saw that name. It's kind of important. We, we want to show you, right? Um, and obviously, you know, it knows that it's an IP address and um, you can write a note on this if you want to. And this is how tagging works, right? Now, what's nice is these, when once you have this heads up display and you have a, uh, you have it open like this, then these, these areas within this heads up display basically become these hotspots to do certain things. So, for instance, if I just click on the title, it would Google that name. And obviously, this is probably not the same person, you see, because Michael Bailey, that's, that's pretty a common name, right? So we've provided it also with like some context. Now, you see now it knows that it's been seen on Google as well. So if I want to say, okay, I want to see, if I click over there, then it says, well, Michael Bailey on Mandian.com, because that's where you've seen it. Um, and so now we, we're pretty sure that we are, you know, working with the right person here. So that is also, you know, that's more kind of work that he's done over here. Um, let's search for Michael Bailey and uh, Hacker. I mean, not that he is one, but, you know, it's typically. So now we have his LinkedIn profile over here. And click on that. We're still recording all of these things. And here you can see, like, for instance, his name is now underlined on this LinkedIn page as well. Um, and it says work on works on malware because that's the note that we've given it. Um, and, you know, uh, let's, uh, let's go to one of the other links here. Um, he's got a, I don't know, maybe he's got a Hacker One profile. Okay, his name is underlined again. Uh, and you can see we saw it on LinkedIn as well, right? And now this is getting a, a little bit more crowded over here. Okay, and he's, he hasn't done anything on here. Um, oh, let's just close, reopen that, that tab. And remember, we're still, um, we're still recording, right? Uh, so a book on Amazon. Um, And let's see, let's just get a page like this. Now, let's say, uh, I'm not even sure that this is Michael Bailey. I don't think it is, but it doesn't matter, right? But let's say this photo here is really important to us. We, we go, this is the guy. That's, that's who we're looking for, right? Um, 
we want to save, we want to look at this particular photo. Now, as a start, Fortimo saves all pictures that it extracts. I'm going to show you what it looks like in the UI. Remember, this still looks like this, but when I do a reload, um, then, oops, let me just do it like so. If we do a reload, then all of these other searches and things that we've been to, uh, Mandian pages, all of this, Amazon page is now also here. Let's put it like this. We can kind of see what's going on. Right. Now, let's just go one step back into the UI. On the left here, you'll see these are the places that we've seen these pages. We saw things on Wikipedia, Google, Mandiant, AFR.com, Amazon, HackerOne, LinkedIn, Sportsnet. So you can really quickly navigate to this and say, oh, I think it was on LinkedIn. And when you click on it, it will say, well, that's the page. That's what the page looked like, right? Well, there's only one page on LinkedIn. Um, if there are more than one pages, there at the top, I can press on that X to kill that filter, right? Um, in this case, on Wikipedia, we know there were a lot of pages. There were six pages. So if we click on Wikipedia, it shows me these are all the things that came from the Wikipedia site, right? Um, and obviously, everything else filters with this. So these objects that got extracted from these pages follow this filter. What does it mean? If I click on Wikipedia, this updates to say these are the names and the objects and the IP addresses and the what what that you've seen from Wikipedia. It doesn't show you the other stuff because it's it's filtering by the URL that's uh, Wikipedia. So for instance, if we look at this page that was AFR, right, you'll see that these are the things that we extracted. There's an email address that we got from the Bailey at FAR. This is the page, but it's only these things over here, right? In the same way, we can filter on the object. So if we click on Michael Bailey, which you will see now, has been seen on six different pages, and this is why it's at the top. Well, that's kind of because it's the most important to us. So if I click on this name, it will start by showing me where it's seen that within the page, but this also updates. So you're not seeing Wikipedia in here anymore because we never saw his name on Wikipedia, right? So this is the way we've seen it. And that is the what we've seen, right? There's a third um, dimension that you can filter with. And that is the when you've seen it, right? So if I clear all filters, I can also press escape, right? Then you'll see here at the bottom, there's basically a timeline of when we were surfing the internet, right? I'm going to quickly go to one more page because then we can, you know, we had a little break now by surfing, uh, by surfing the internet. So... I'm just going to go to, let's say we go to one more, one more post over here, right? Okay, so, right, and then I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to do a reload. Um, okay, let's just wait for that to come in, and there's the medium page. And you'll see here, there's the break that we had in time. And as you move your mouse along here at the bottom, this actually shows you in time when these pages got seen right so clearly we had one page that we had here right at the beginning um we this page is even before we started this presentation i'm probably just testing that it's working um, and then these pages were over here right so remember at the beginning we looked at the wikipedia pages right so if i click on wikipedia over here you'll see how this bottom updates right look at it okay so you see there it updates to only show me that this is the time frame in which I've seen this, right? And what's cool about this is I can basically select time as well. I can say, well, what was that first page that I've seen? So I, I press the mouse and I grab a little time zone, right? And it would then basically zoom into that and it would say, oh, oh, that's when you were on the Fortima page, basically before this presentation start. When was it? There's the time. 1650 when I was doing the download, right? So there's the time filter that we have at the top, so I can basically kill that. And so this is not very exciting because we basically, you know, we're busy for how long now? For half an hour. But if you have a 
two weeks worth of data or if you have a month worth of data and you want to say, well, I know that I saw this in the beginning of the investigation or I think it was at the end, or if you see a name, so for instance, if I click on a name, then obviously that becomes a filter, right? And this time updates accordingly. So we haven't seen the name Michael Bailey at the beginning of the investigation. If you click on a name and you see little dots throughout your investigation, then you know, all oh, this name has been coming up everywhere, right? So that is the way that you can get your pages back. Of course, you can just search, like straight up search all your pages that you have anyway for a word. So uh, let's search for the word wicket. And as you type, it updates. And it would say, okay, well, you saw this on Wikipedia and on sportsstats.com.au because wicket is a cricket term, right? And you saw it in, the, in, these, in this time. Right at the beginning, we served a lot of like cricket sites and kind of declined there, right? If we search for the word hacker, right, you'll see, well, we saw it on Google, AFR, Hacker One, LinkedIn, Medium. Ah, oh, you can combine these things and you can say, well, the word hacker, did I see it on LinkedIn? Really? Did I? So click on LinkedIn and it would say, yes, it's seen it as certified ethical hacker, right? And if I click on this page, We'll bring it back up and in here somewhere, I'm not going to go through all of this, is the word certified ethical hacker. Uh, it's probably here somewhere. Hey, there we go, certified ethical hacker. Right. So you did see the word hacker on, we, uh, on uh, LinkedIn during this time. And then of course the time also updates to show you exactly when that was. So all of these things give you a kind of a way to find pages really quickly. You can also um, search in here at the top so if i want to search urls or titles um, and i say mm, we know that it was about uh, carbonac so if i search for car car then there you go those are the two carbonac pages that we've seen right um, so that search is in the title but it also can search within the url right so if you have a specific thing like you know, it's photo.php or something like this, then you can also put that in. Similarly, we can search within the objects. So in here, what did we have? We know that guy's name was James, Lily White. So we search for James at the top. It says, well, we've seen also James Curran and James Southerton. We've seen it on these places. So now I can say, well, did I see a James, any kind of James on Amazon? And you did. It's on this page somewhere. I'm not going to look, but it's on this page, right? All right. So this is how you can basically get your pages back and how you can search for it. I mean, there's other ways to do it as well. Um, you can also search now by tag, for instance, right? So we just tagged objects, right? Um, right? Remember, up to now, we've just tagged objects. So here you see it says objects, three tags. And if I click on object tags, I can see that there are two favorites and one note. So anything that is that you put a note on automatically gets the note tag as well. All right. So let's look at the two objects that we had favorited. I'm going to click on it. One was a, an IP address, remember, and one was Michael Bailey. And of course, now because we selected this, everything else updates. We're not going to see Wikipedia in here because we didn't have any tagged items on Wikipedia and we're not going to see the time over here and we're not going to see that first page so everything else follows this so you can make a combination of all of those filters can get pretty crazy right and the reason why we switch back to the UI was to look at um, photos pictures right so let's look at that so Vortimo has two modes it has this visit mode that we call and it also has the image mode and to go to images you just click on two images, right? And it basically starts at the top and it says, these are all the images that you've seen. But what's nice is you can all use all of these filters that you've now used as well. So for instance, if I want to say, well, only show me images that I saw on Wikipedia, I can click on Wikipedia and then, well, we get all these cricket photos, right? All these cricket pages, right? Um, and if we want to say, Oh, but I'm sure that I saw, I'm sure that I saw this, this photo on LinkedIn, right? And go to LinkedIn 
Um, and here's all the photos that came from LinkedIn. And this actually, I think this is the person that we're looking for, right? That is Michael. I think that is Michael Bailey. I don't know him. Um, right. We can search here by size. So we can say, actually, I don't want to see tracking, you know, I don't want to see small tracking icons and small things. I only want to see medium pictures. There's only one that comes from LinkedIn, right? That that is the side, uh, that is the size, right? Now, okay. So remember, we're looking at all photos that come from anywhere. We can search by size. We can also search by EXIF, and we can also search by hash. But I'll look into that in a little bit, a little bit later. What I want to show you is how you tag images. So remember, we we have to go to image mode there. So I'm going to clear all my filters. And I'm going to go back to visits and this is what the way that it looks like. Okay, so now, what did we say? We said this photo, where was it? It was on mm, LinkedIn, was it? And we say this photo is important to us, right? Okay, so how do you tag images? Well, you right click on the image and if it opens up this image uh, right click menu context menu then you'll see there's a thing that says Vortimo image tag so again right click on the image image tag and now you get to write a note again so that guy we don't need to write a note and you apply the tag we're going to look in that next and then you click enter and it says changes saved right and now when you go back here and you refresh you should see that you have image tags one is a note and one is a favorite right and if i click on favorite there's the image right so now i can tag images and say hey this is important to me actually when you mouse over it you'll see it says that guy which is the note that we made on that right and it and it remembers that note so when we go back here and we go right click on an image tag then it says that guy it remembers that right so that that is the way that we tag images and you can tag any image anywhere right um, you can also obviously change it over here so if you want to change this note that you wrote on this you can right click go note say that guy is great right and if we click off this i'm, I'm hoping this is going to work and if we go back here and we say okay right click hopefully this is going to update on this side as well then it says that guy's great which is pretty cool right okay now the last thing i want to show you is how you tag pages so let's say this page is really important to us and we're like oh this is now the page where we find everything about michael bailey and we want to tag it what you can do is you can right click anywhere here and you can say portimo page tag and that brings up a thing that says tag url so now we'll say this is nb right and we're going to say okay okay and let's also say that one of these other sites this thing ah oh, this is where we were just now let's say well this is his maybe this is his instagram account i don't know Michael Bailey, oh, honk the planet, B-sides, um, I'm going to guess it's him. Let's go to this, let's go to this um, profile here. See again, it is highlighted. You'll see that Mike Bailey 97 has a yellow dotted underline. Why? Because it's seen it on LinkedIn and it's seen it on Google. And so that's maybe his alias that he used. So, Vortimo is telling you, hey, maybe you should look at this, right? And I can say, well, actually, now I want to tag it. This is important. You're right. So I'm going to click on the tag button and I apply the tag and I'm going to say tag it. And now it becomes red because now it's tagged, right? And it shows me I can search for Mike Bailey 97 with uh, B sides DC. And okay, it doesn't, doesn't find anything with that. But it allows me to do that real quickly. And if I go back to the UI, and I update it here, then you'll see, just going to go back to visits, right? There's his uh, Instagram page that we saved, right? We now have uh, image tags. Uh, oh, what did we do? No, object tags. Our object tags is now four. 
and there's Mike Bailey 97. It's also now. If we click on it, obviously we're only going to get stuff. Oh, actually, now we can see where we found it on LinkedIn. So we can click on LinkedIn. There you see he basically links to it on Instagram from his LinkedIn page. Okay, so that's how how we can learn these kind of things. Now, I can go into much more detail on how a lot of these things work. And there's a ton of stuff still to show. Um, but I also want to get to show some of the new stuff. Um, and that is, uh, and we don't, we're not going to, we're going to run out of time real quick, right? Um, what I can say is that you can have many different tags. So if I quickly just say, let's say, let's say we want to, let's say Bailey was a, person of interest for us and we want to make a tag that's called Bailey okay and let's pick the color and we'll let's make it orange right and also let's pick something that was cricket all right so cricket and cricket can stay can stay uh, blue right now check this out right um, if I want to move the tags from favorite to Bailey what do I do well I say select the objects right that are tagged favorite and it's these ones right and then I click on this three buttons over here and that applies to everything that's in this list then I go to tags and I say okay that's all about Bailey save okay and now obviously because my tag is favorite there's no results so if I take that filter off and you see here he has the word Bailey and the word and the tag notes because there's a note on it that says works of malware and that's all now on Bailey right now what's interesting is when I go back to a page where his name appears you'll now see a red dotted line and not a solid red line and the reason for that is because we don't match the tag that we're working on at the moment at the moment the tag config says favorite and these things are tagged as Bailey see there Bailey it's tagged as Bailey that updates right all of that stuff updates so this is now marked, marked as Bailey so basically what, what Timo is telling you is it's saying hey this is you this was tagged this is kind of important but it's not matching what you're working on right now so you might be working in an investigation on several different individuals or groups um, and you could be like saying well for the next you know two days I'm going to be working on this person so I can still tag stuff as another person, as Cricket or Bailey or whatever I want to. Um, and I want to see that it matches something that I've worked on, but I don't want it to be there all the time. And speaking of that, you actually have the ability to turn this underlining off exactly the way that you want to, right? So in this case, it's showing everything. But if I want to turn it off, you see that it's turned off. Or I can say... Mm. only show me stuff that match my tag or only show me suggested stuff or show me things that are both suggested and tagged right so you can turn it off if you don't like it you could just turn it off right it doesn't need to sit there all the time okay and while we're busy talking about this thing over here we there's a couple of modes that Vortima can operate in one is it can operate in a way that it doesn't record every page that you're on unless you specifically record it and that's this recording mode over here right so we can set recording off it can be like a you don't want to record right now it doesn't record um, unless you press the shutter right so if you press the shutter it will always take whatever's on the page and it'll say okay that's what you need to record right now so even if we're at the bottom of this page right and you say okay record now it will record this bottom of this page right okay um, and I've seen here there's another thing here that says screen grab which is kind of also cool so let's go back to something that is not Instagram let's go let's go here and let's say we're interested in this picture but we really don't want to see we want to see the context of this picture so we want to see this whole section over here so then what you can do is you can click on this thing it says screen grab and you get a cross here and you can basically drag a section and say oh, this is what I want to see and you say okay and if you say okay it gets saved as uh, 
it gets saved, but you can also say, oh, but I also want to tag it. So I want to tag it, and I want to tag this with Bailey. All right. Okay. And now when I go back into uh, the, the UI, and I go to image tags, you'll see there's one that's marked Bailey, and it is that portion of the screen, right? So that's how you tag images. And you can do all sorts of other things as well. I mean, if you, if you, if we're going to talk about, um, we're going to, we're going to talk about enrichment just now. Maybe I'll just go back to uh, screen grab areas of the, of the screen that you want. Um, so let's say we wanted this picture and that, right? Remember, you could press this button over here, which gives you that screen grab, but you can also press Control Q, because you know it's faster, right? And well, okay, let's, let's grab this area of the screen. And that's Control Q. In this case, I'm just going to say, okay, just grab it. Just, I don't want to know about bookmark uh, tags and shit like that. Okay, so that's just it's, you know we just grab that thing straight off there. Um, and there's also the way that there's a a, a shortcut for. Um, screen grabs there's also shortcuts for tagging a page which is control q so you press control q forget that it says tag image that's just a bug um, it will tag it will tag the page so cricket page actually i don't want to even write a note i just want to tag it and i want to tag it with cricket and by the way if i'm tagging pages with cricket all the time i can just say set as default right so now if I go to the next page, which is now the ashes, and mm, this is not interesting. Remember, we're not recording this, right? Because of that. I'm going to go to Florence Murphy. And we want to be like, well, this page is important, right? Now I'm going to do Control X. And you can see by default, it now applies the cricket tag. So I don't need to set it every time, right? Um, and I'm going to write a note. I'm going to say, old person, maybe. Okay, and I'll click on the OK. Right. And when you tag a page, then obviously the page gets saved. So if I clear my results, go back to my visits, then you'll see here Florence is tagged. Um, but the page before Florence was not tagged, which was the ashes. So in here, we go to this. The ashes, you won't see the ashes because you know what? We didn't record it. We set the thing to be um, manual recording. So manual recording only happens when you tag things on the page or when you actually press on this little shutter over here. That will also do that. Okay. Now I want to talk about enrichment because, oh, actually, let's go back to this. This was the demo. There's more things as well, right? One of the things that we did show was what we know, what I will just say is graph stuff, right? And this is a new feature that we put into Vortima 1.1. And actually what it allows is it allows you to see this data, um, a graphical representation of it. And the only place where you set it is this little button over there. So if I click on this button, it will break. This is not great. Let's just do a reload of this. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, magically you get to have to read the license agreement. Uh, and then we do it again. There we go. All right. And that is um, what it looks like. So you'll see, obviously, the object Michael Bailey is pretty, pretty big there because he's central to what we've been looking at. But some of the other stuff that you maybe, there's is. Um, there's his uh, alias that you see over there. You can actually navigate around on this, right? Uh, so uh, let's just see if we can move around. Oh, it is so slow on this notebook. Why can I not move around? Why can I not move around? I'm not really sure why. I'm, oh, there we go. Now we can move around. Okay. So here you can see you know, uh, B-Sides, DC, Honk, the Planet, 
And that came from these visits that were over there. You know, if you mouse over it, you'll see what it is. Um, Hacker One, you know, it's a URL that we saw a lot of places. Um, but what's nice is that this follows the filters that sits over here. So for instance, um, you see that, this, oh, by the way, you see that the stuff that are, the, the objects that have tags have a little circle around it. So that's the one. Well, let's see where's the other one. Um, these are the ones, these are the URLs that have, you see it's got a little yellow uh, uh, lines around it. Um, and there's the, there's this, the IP address also has it, and there's the other one, right? Uh, that's the alias that we got. Um, but obviously, you know, you could do things like say, well, actually, we're just interested in aliases. And then it will obviously just render the thing as what the aliases looks like. Um, and it kind of brings us at an interesting point, which is about how the capturing system works. Now, we do a lot of effort to capture dynamic pages. Um, I'm doing a talk at uh, Layer 8 I think that I think that the conference is this Friday, um, specifically about the capturing system that we use within Votima, um, and it's actually quite interesting. Well, I think it's quite interesting uh, because we put a lot of effort into how the capturing works. Um, but okay, so look at the talk. Um, attend the talk. It's virtual, so I think it's pretty cool. Um, anyhow, this is the graph. That's what the graph uh, graphing looks like. So I can I can say. Actually, I can have a, a search here that I say, well, I'm, I'm searching for, um, for Bailey. Um, and then this updates and the graph updates as well. So that everything that you see now, um, these objects that are extracted from here are extracted from pages that contain the word Bailey. Um, and if I want to say, well, I want to see the stuff that I saw at the beginning, then of course I can set the filter here at the bottom as well. And this is now only on pages that I've seen in a certain time frame. So all of the filters that we have applied um, still applies to the graph. And as you mouse over it, you basically see um, which sites it had. Um, you know, there's the places that we've seen this hashtag, um, and you can set the, you can show the the actual labels of the visits. Right, so there you can move around. These are the, uh, uh, that was a search that we did and resulted in all of these things. And when you actually click on a, when you click on, on one of these, it becomes blue and the stuff that travels through it, um, the, the links that it's connected to also becomes blue. So that gives you a nice idea to quickly, you know, navigate through these things and say, okay, I want to see what that is. So it's just another view on the data, it's specifically useful when you're looking at, um, things like uh, social networks, and you've been um, using a lot of, uh, you've been going to a lot of different sites um, on, you know, let's say Twitter, you've been scrolling through a lot of different Twitter pages, and you actually want to see which um, hashtags or aliases are mentioned more than others, then this is super useful to see. Okay, so that is what Timo, and again, I can talk about how you export stuff, there's like export as a zip, the best thing if you want to learn more is you go to this URL, right? This is the magical URL. It's called full doc. Um, it is linked from the page. Uh, and I'm just going to switch off the extension for now. Uh, well, we, we're not recording any pages. Uh, let's just switch it off, right? Um, this is where we basically talk about everything. So here's tagging images. There's even videos with like famous people that show you how tagging works. Um, you know, how you can do, how you can tag pages, mm, browser augmentation, the recording modes that we talked about, you know, recording off, recording on, recording mode, the heads up display. So all of the documentation, this, this documentation took forever to write and it's, I think it's pretty good. You can also show you how to export these things to other people so that you can share this data. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't, didn't cover in this talk because I want to get to some of the new stuff. Um, and the first thing I want to get to is Autovort, right? 
Now, <laughs> autovort is like, there's also a section here on autovort. Where is it? There. Right, so you can also, I mean, you can also watch it over here. But autovort is basically an extension that allows you to automate your browser. And you can see why this is useful when you start using it in conjunction with uh, Vortima. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly start a new project. Uh, where is that? There. Okay, and I'm going to call it mm, because that's what you call stuff. Um, and then while this is creating the project, it sometimes takes a bit of time because it's building all the databases and stuff. And close this. I'm going to close this and close this. And I'm going to say, go to the Chrome store. Chrome store. Um, okay. And then I'm going to search in here for auto. So, road. and there it is, and it's not really officially supported, so um, you'll see why. I'm going to add it, add extension, right, and there it is, and we're going to pin it. Okay, now let's see what AutoVort does. So, in the most basic level of AutoVort, Okay, I'm just going to go through this. Basically says, don't be angry if our stuff breaks. Right. Um, let's go to Twitter. Uh, let's go to Twitter.com. Okay. And we switch on recording. Right. Recording is now on. It's, it's uh, extension is on. Recording was off. So I'm going to switch recording on. So now we're recording. Right. And if we scroll down here. Um, and this has to do with the uh, uh, dynamic pages. We scroll down here. Mm, you'll see what happens on this. On oh, let's just do a reload. Sorry, let's just do a reload here. Make sure everything is okay. Okay. Scrolling down here. Okay. Okay. And as you scroll, you'll see that it's taking little snapshots. It's taking snapshots and it's doing all sorts of things. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, we can end up. We end up on this perfectly interesting picture of this dude. Now, what does it look like over here? Over here. Uh, oh, let's just do a reload here. Yeah, there you go. So over here, you'll see that it actually has a couple of pages from Twitter, right? That it has. Um, and if you go to the last one, well, that's where we ended up. And actually, when you scroll up here, you'll see that this portion is blank, which is kind of weird, right? It's, it's not there. Because basically, Twitter unloads stuff at the top. So you never see the whole page. You just think the whole page is there, but it's not. And the way that we handle this is we make, I'm going to hope that this works right. Yeah, you see, we make little, we make it so that it's almost paginated. So this is the first couple of pages, second pages, third pages. And so you're not losing any of this information. Thumbnail might not look right, but here you see uh, this is the top. Uh, the top is still not there, but it would be it would be on this page. And that's the top. Yeah, remember, this is where Lisa was sitting. And of course, we're seeing all of this information. All of the aliases get hashtags. Everything is here. So anything that you will find on here, even if you scroll down anywhere within this page, will be within this, right? It'd be there somewhere. Uh, if you look at the images, um, you know, those are all the images that, that was extracted there. Okay, so we know that everything is there. Um, and let's say we pick someone. Let's say, oh, I don't know, man. Let's just pick someone interesting, right? Um, Let's pick, oh my word, I know boring people on Twitter. Mm. Oops, I'm not going to pick that guy. Let's pick uh, Rochelle. Now, what does AutoVault do? Well, AutoVault in its most basic form scrolls, right? So I can click on this and I can say, hmm. Scroll down 15 pages, and it would be like, okay, we're going to scroll down 15 pages. Now, you might think that scrolling is kind of boring, and anyone can scroll. 
But scrolling is actually not that simple because um, as a start, if you scroll the same amount of pixels at exactly the same amount of time, then uh, these sites uh, have the tendency to kick you off because they, they can see that you're not human. So that's the first part. So you've got to randomize that stuff. Um, and secondly, a lot of times things get loaded at the bottom as you get to the bottom. So if you are scrolling a page and you're thinking that you're going to keep um, scrolling till the end, you might get to the end and then say there's nothing more and then stuff gets loaded in at the bottom. So there's a whole lot of things that you need to consider when you scroll. And those things are all encapsulated in this thing that's called run settings. So you can see here, this is all the little things that we have that says, sorry, that says, you got to scroll between a minimum of, you know, a thousand and a thousand and twenty pixels. Um, it's all minimum, maximum, pixel random number between minimum and maximum of these things, right? How many milliseconds to wait between page scrolls? There's a whole lot of things that you can set there and you can experiment with it and see how it works. So clearly now when we scroll down 15 pages, you can also infinitely scroll, right? Uh, we should have this information here within Wartima. And we do. So there are the things that we scroll down on Rachel, 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 um, that we scroll down. So all of the information that's in here is now captured within there. Mm. Now, that's great. But what if we have many pages that we want to go to? So let's say you've got 15 Twitter profiles and you got to get the last hundred pages on there and you've got to index that um, so, and that is what this thing is about scroll url list right so what this does is it gives you the ability to put in a list of urls and then go there right and scroll down the amount that is set in this default scroll length and set it. you can set it per page as well you can put a number at the end of the URL, so you can put the URL and a comma and the number of pages that it's got to scroll down, right? So let's just see how it works in real life, right? So here we have, let's say, a list of URLs. These are URLs that I got from, actually I got these URLs from Multigo, right? So I'm going to copy this. I oh, see, I can do it with one hand. And I'm going to go here. It's not on Twitter. These things are, you know, everywhere else. And I'm going to say, click to start. And I'm going to paste. And now, this is about Russian disinformation around. Um, it's not, is it Russian disinformation? I think it is. Or it might be about uh, the Sputnik vaccine. Mm, I don't know. It's hard to say. Okay, so it's, it's going to go, you're going to go back here. Actually, to see does it, no, it keeps it there now, all of this is saved in local storage right okay so mm, let's say we don't want to go 25 pages we want to go just two mm, yeah, i only want to go two pages down oh, num lock okay okay we want to go zero two pages down <sighs> okay, okay. So we basically want to load the just want to load the page and scroll down a little bit. Okay. And we have all of these things over here. Okay. Actually we're gonna delete this, so I'm gonna just select all of this stuff and say permanently remove. Okay, I'm gonna take a bit of time because it's gotta update the graph and basically delete all the nodes and everything. Okay, so now it's empty. Okay, I'm gonna go back here, click on this. Click to start, and then I'm going to say start, right? And it's going to go to the first one, which is this. Okay, it's going to scroll down two pages. In this case, there, there is nothing. There's no two pages. It's going to wait a bit, and then it's going to go to the next one. And as it finishes the page, it basically puts it into this done column, right? So at any stage, if something breaks, or you want to stop, or your computer stops, or whatever reason something is not working, you could just go back here and then local storage it will keep track of where you were right and then you can just you know start from where you were okay so now we're capturing these pages hey? so as we go along these pages are being captured okay 
Now it tells you we've done four, we have done five of 25 of these things. This is how far we are on the page count of these. Of course, we can say, actually, we want to skip this one. And it's all, we'll skip this one as well, because that's just the error, right? Okay. Let's try and load something. Uh, Hunter Biden, blah, 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 blah. Um, and even like things like this pop up that sits here, it will go past that, right? Which is really important. That's also not that easy to just do. Okay. Um, now, of course, I can have the UI in a different browser and I, I can run the UI in, I can run Firefox for that. I don't know if I have Firefox here. Do I have Firefox? I don't have Firefox. Do I have Brave? I think I have Brave. Okay, so I'm going to start Brave, right, while this is happening. And then, mm, download it now. And then I'm going to load the interface over there, right? Okay, now we're actually loading the interface. Hope it works. Yeah. It, I mean, the machine is taking strength because it's streaming all of this to you as well. But here are the ones that it got so far, right? So when I kill, I can now interact with these pages. Here you can even see there's like, I don't know, it looks like Bitcoin addresses. There's a Bitcoin address over there. Can you believe it out? Now you can also support us and with the Bitcoin address that got extracted. And so you can basically work with this information as it's, as it's collecting these things. But let's go here and we stop it. Okay. And... I'm going to kill Brave just because this machine is taking strain, right? And you can see we did 13 of the 25. You can click off it, and when you come back, uh, it will tell you, hey, you, you know, you got 13 of 25. You can say reset state so that these go back in here so that you start again. Or you can say reset all, which, you know, it just would just clear it. But these are text boxes, so you can literally just select it and copy it into Notepad. And, you know, there's no saving it to a database or stuff like this. It's, it's just that. All right, so that is um, AutoBoard. And AutoBoard is really useful uh, for collecting stuff automatically. So these, they are the, how many did we get? 13. We've got 13 over there. You can see there is the count, 13. And over here, what did we get over here? How many did we... I'm going to do this now. So what did we get over here? Click to start. We got 13. Those are the 13 that we got. So those, these 13 now got indexed over here. And, you know, I can do things like I can say, well, find me images. I don't know. Let's see if in the EXIF there's Nikon cameras. Um, no, there's not. Or Canon. Canon. Was any of these pictures on Facebook? So Facebook me MD. No, that's a pity. Um, did we have stuff from Photoshop? Photo. Yeah. So in this EXIF, if I double click, uh, here's the EXIF, and in here somewhere we'll see Photoshop. Uh, no, photographic export group. Okay, it's not Photoshop. But you can search in EXIF with that. That's not the point. I want to talk about enrichment later on, right? Um, actually, now would be a good time to talk about enrichment because we are over an hour and we're not even at the cool stuff yet. Okay, so let's talk about enrichment. Now, okay, so you see how, uh, sorry, you see how AutoVord can be super useful when you have to go, for instance, to... Um, you know, a list of uh, Twitter accounts and you need to see what's going on there and you need to capture it. Then you just put it in there, scroll down, I don't know how many pages, whatever, how many pages you need um, and you got all of that stuff locally and you can, you know, do analysis, you can do a graph. I think we did actually, I did a, I did a post on Twitter about that where we looked at the, the Grux um, I'll just take this recording off. This one is which the recording off, right? Um, I looked at the I looked at the Grac, um Where is it? A month worth of his posts. Um, here. 
And this is what it looks like because now we can graph this as well. And we can say, oh, only look at aliases, for instance. You know, only look at hashtags. Um, so that stuff works pretty well. Um, and I think, it's, I think it's very powerful. Okay, so enough about, enough about this. Let's talk about enrichment. So within an enrichment, these objects, so if I go, let's go to email addresses and uh, this, oh, hang on, let's go to our previous um, database that was the one that we used in the first, and now we switch, we're back to Test Cricket and Bailey, Michael Bailey and so on. Okay, so any of these things, so let's pick a IP address, so, and it was this 94 IP address, you can double click on it. And actually, you get this enrichment panel, right? Where you can run uh, sensors and rob techs and show and all of those things against it. And there's links as well. So you'd be like, oh, you know, where's this thing located? Uh, it just populates that into IP location. Um, and it says, well, okay, there's all the places where it could have been. So these are all, these are all the, way, these are the way, th this is the way that we do enrichment. But... You can also change the node, you can set the tags, you know, all of those kind of things. But um, we kind of got to the stage where I said, this stuff here is really cool to have, but I want to have it without having to load Vortima. I want to have it separate, right? Um, and that is exactly what we've done. So if you go to Skylight, we're calling this Skylight. Then you basically see that screen, uh, this screen, but in a browser, right? Now look at what happens here, right? Um, let's pick, let's pick up that IP address, right? So it's there. We can just click on copy. Uh, it's one-handed, and we say paste, right? Um, and then. It says, well, it's an IP address. We know what it is. We can we can actually have multiples, right? So let's just pick one around it. Um, and then we can run these widgets against uh, sensors, Robtech, those things. We can run this against, the, uh, against these IP addresses. Now, where do you populate the API keys? So I'm going to ask the producer. I hope the producer is still here somewhere. And I'm not speaking, maybe I've lost internet connectivity and I've been talking into space for the last 45 minutes. Um, to switch to just my face, because I'm going to populate these keys. Um, and I'm going to show you um, how, I'm going to try to show you how it's, I'm going to talk you through it. You'll see that there's a, that there's a, on the right hand side, there's a gear that sits there, right? And that basically exposes a, a screen where you can set all of the API keys, right? Um, and there's no concept of being logged in. So there's no, oh, I've got to be logged in. Um, there's, there's just, you put the API key in there and, and that's it. Now, how do you save it? Well, you can put it in a file. Uh, you can copy the text. Um, you can upload the file. Uh, it's basically the text that you see on the right-hand side is basically just a representation of the, um, the JSON representation of what's happening on the left. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you've now seen how to put the API keys in. That's it's pretty simple, right? So the producer of the show, you can put me back, you can put the screen back because I'm not going to show those things again, right? Now those API keys are being set, right? So I can just say, okay, I want to run Robtex against those two IPs. And it would go, that's the input and that's the output. So this guy, this is in Bulgaria. And the other one obviously is also in Bulgaria because it's right next to it, right? Um, and I can say, hmm, let's just, uh, let's just make it on one IP address, right? Let's actually just make it on something random. I, I generally don't know where this is. And I'm going to change that to a one over there. Okay, so it's still an IP address, it still seems to be valid. I'm going to run census on it. Okay, my luck, it's not found. I'm going to run Robtex on it. Okay, there's Robtex, it says it's in Switzerland, and it's in Zurich, and that's what it is. And there's nothing else on it, so it's pretty boring, right? 
But let's say I want to save this. I want to I want to save this result somehow. I just don't want it to sit here and I'm not going to see it again. Well, actually, let's see what happens if we close that tab completely and we open it up again. OK, Ta -da, there it is, because all of this information is actually stored in local storage. Right. Um, you can clear it, you can say clear and then it's gone. And if something like this breaks and you're like, well, I don't want that, you can actually just exit out. Right, so that I can X out and now I only have this this last result that I've seen. Um, and obviously the links are there. So, you know, you can say, you know, and I'll run a hunter against it or whatever. You'll see that some of the output has hyperlinks in there. So if I click on the hyperlink, it actually becomes the input. If I click on that IP address there, that becomes the input. This gets to be an IP address and I can run these things on it. And I can go to sensors or I can run virus total on it. Um, I'm going to clear this over here. I'm going to say, okay, run all of these things on it, right? Um, and of course, Shodan doesn't know about it and census doesn't know about it. So let's just pick something that is that we know is has some data. This is in South Africa. Oh, what? One, one, six, what? 25, dot one. Oh my word. Dot one. I have to type with one hand. Dot one. I have two dots. Okay, I have two dots. Dot one. Okay. And it says it's an IP address, run all. Okay, and there it comes back and it says it's in Valcom, Free State. This thing says it's in Cape Town. This shows you the passive DNAs, the four DNAs. And these are just the ones that we've created now. And obviously, there's only a handful of them, but the plan would be to create a lot more. You can also search through all of this output. So let's say there, Zurich, right? Zurich. I want to search for it. So then it says, hey, you only found it in this result, in this block, right? That's that block. Okay, and if I take it away, and I see everything back again. So it's really that simple. Um, what's kind of cool about it as well is, I'm just going to fire up Word, right, is I can do things like, um, let's say I need that information, and I'm lazy, and I need to put it in a report. I click there on Image, and if I paste, I get it nicely formatted in exactly the same way. A small little bit of branding over there um, we can also get it as text so there's all the text you know so now you can be like oh actually i want to change it you know, i want to put it in a table it's kind of comma separated so that you can easily put it in your own table right um, and that goes for that goes for any of these oh where am i now uh there's it goes for any of these things i can say copy the text copy the image um and there you go now, wouldn't it be nice if we can have this kind of output in our browser that we don't need to go here, but that we have these things as an extension, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say any. So I see now I can see all the things that I have. And you'll see this little, keep, keep in mind that we have this little checkbox over here. Right. I'm going to show you what it does just now. Right. Um, I'm going to now uninstall this extension that I have, which is Wotimo. Where is it? I'm going to remove it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the extension that we're busy working on. It's still in development, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's just another version of the Wotimo extension. Right. Now, okay, now let's close, let's close this, let's close this, and let's go, let's close this, and this, and I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to this URL. I'm going to go there because just, I mean, I don't want to waste your time searching around. Now I'm going to go to this URL, right? Okay, and this doesn't really matter too much, so we can actually set recording off here, yeah? right? Okay, so this is what we wanted to see. 
Yeah. Okay, let's see. Hopefully this is going to work. This is very beta. Right. So here you'll see a telephone number, right? And there you see some email addresses. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to open... Where is this? I'm also going to open this one. I think this one we had opened before. Okay, I'm going to open it over there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and okay, it's still highlighting these things, and that's not the point, right? So let's pick this IP address. I'm going to pick it. And then you'll see there's two things over here. These are the new enrichment uh, buttons. This thing says, mm, take it to Skylight. So if I open it up, it populates that thing. And it says, well, here you are. Now you can do whatever you want to do, right? Um, you can run these things by hand. You don't need to type it in there. You can just take it straight into Skylight. And this one, hey, this one says, run it here in a modal straight off, right? And then it runs rub text and show it in, oh, in this case now it doesn't census doesn't know about this but rub text knows about it you know and we can do it on this one and actually on the heads up display you'll also see it it sits there and there we we'll run it here oh, of course it's not my luck okay that it doesn't and there's who is information in Bulgaria Okay, and how does it decide which ones it's going to run? Well, the ones that it decides to run are, let's just go to Skylight itself. The ones that it decides to run are these. So on IP address, it's going to run everything that I have for IP address. Let's look at some of the other widgets, right? So for instance, for phone number, I have everyone API, HLR lookup, and I'm now going to, also auto run peop the people widget, right? So now let's go back to this page. So if I select this, which is a telephone number, we don't need to think about it. We know it's a telephone number. And I say populate, then hopefully, there we go. And it runs people against it. It says it's this guy, he's this old, Mm, he has telephone numbers, that's where he's from. Rate my professor, because you can see this is an academic sign. Does the HLR look up where it's from, blah, blah, blah. Runs it on everyone API, says it's in Manhattan. And this kind of matches up with all of these things. And of course, if I take, if I take this other telephone number here, let's take this one, and I click on it, well, then that's going to open up in Skylight again, and we can start again. Okay? And as you can see, it actually runs this immediately with the ones that you have here. But all of the other information that we had in the past is still here. And still, if I go here and I search for Zurich, oh, well, that's still there. Unless I clear it, of course, and I can just say clear. But this gives me the ability to basically, and of course, I can say, well, I'll copy that, and then... You know, I paste it over here. Oh, fuck. And that doesn't work. Ah, oh, no. It's supposed to work. Well, I mean, it's still beta. Well, let's just see. Did it really not work? That is disappointing. No, Florian. Image. No. Okay. But, it, I mean, it will work. You, you can see it worked on the, on the other one. So, it it's just a matter of time before that works really well. Now, what happens if we don't know what type it is? So if I just go, hmm, Rebecca Gould, I don't know what it is, run it, then it goes, hey, we don't know either. It's a name or it's a hashtag or it's an alias. Oh, you know, maybe it's a, maybe it's a name. Um, we don't have any auto run widgets at the moment for names. It will come. But I can just say, well, send it off to Skylight. Um, and run, I don't know, the Portimo uh, CSE, a custom search engine on it. And then obviously 
you know, we can take it from here. And that stuff is now integrated with in, we, we probably will release an extension that is not Vortima, that is Skylight, that only has this kind of uh, ability to, you know, grab stuff and send it off. But it also nicely integrates with when you have Vortima, because now you can, you know, this page that you go to um, will be indexed again. And then obviously those things just work a lot better. Um, so that is what the idea is with enrichment um, going forward. Uh, it, there will be the site and people are going to ask me, where does this stuff run, right? Now, these things, if you want to know exactly where they run, the bottom line is they run on, on an AWS Lambda function somewhere in the cloud. Um, but if you want to read about it, you go to our website. Uh, actually, if you want to read about it, you can just click on the this thing there, right? And there's a whole, there's a video on how it works. Where does it run? What gets logged? Uh, TLDR, it gets sent to a Lambda function on AWS. We don't log values. And hey, you know what? You can suggest the link as well. So if you think, oh, you guys got to get dehashed. We're getting dehashed, by the way. But you're like, oh, we need Intel 471. What is it? 714 something. Or whatever. You can click on this link and you'll be like, oh, tell us about this. Uh, tell us, tell us about your idea. You know, for one point, you get the name of service. You tell us the name of the service. Two points, the URL. Three points, the API documentation. Four points, credentials or, you know, test credentials. And then for every point that you get, you get 10,000 air miles. You don't, right? But you can tell us about it and then you can submit some more stuff. And that is how we want to do enrichment going forward. So I'm not sure yet that this within the UI, within the Votimo UI, uh, where are we? Within here, will change. Um, it reuses the same code, so obviously it's the same stuff that runs. But it might be that we put a button over there on the right. Oh, we also have like a dark theme, by the way. Um, we might put a we might put a button here on the side that when you click on it, it actually opens up the whatever the thing is here. You double click on it maybe it opens up in skylight not entirely sure um, how it will work but keep in mind that this website doesn't run this queries it's basically just facilitating this these queries and the plan would be to make it a little bit more generic in future so that so that really what you can do is you can select anything you can say what it is right here yeah, you can say oh this is a that unless we know what it is and it will it will then open up a modal that has information regarding that type in this case we open up now people which we have it for aliases and you know, it doesn't know carbonac and the people database but it shouldn't only be uh, it 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 can also be that it's not going to an api that it's going to you know whatever um and we would want to make it as generic as possible so that this stuff, that the connection between those things are pretty loose um, and that you can extend it um, whatever way you want. So that's the presentation. I don't know if there are any questions from anyone at this stage. I don't know, even know how many people we have still um, that's watching. Uh, anyone? Is it just me? I'm going to stop sharing. Stop. Hello. Hi, yeah, Hello. fantastic. That was very cool. We had we had one person. It was you. Uh no, no, there was I think we had six at some point. Sure. As That's as crazy. well as um was a question earlier on that said, can you please explain how to generate a network graph with the nodes and connections? Hmm. Okay. And otherwise, um, nope, that, that's it. Okay. I, I suspect the person that asked it is like long gone, right? Nope, or they're still, still here. Brian P. Oh, they're still here. here. Okay, we can, we can, we can do it. Let's, uh, let's. He's, he's now it. saying you can disregard that question though. Oh. He's like, I want to go home now. That's what I want to do. Okay. 
<laughs> I want to go home. This is too much. Okay, thanks, guys. Um, I appreciate everybody that dropped up. Um, we're going to also cut this into a video. Uh, and then um, we'll put the video on the on the on on YouTube. Uh, but thanks for, for playing along for those people that came in. Okay, this is where I'm going to kill it. I think you should cut the feed 